everybody, welcome back to Sunflower Cottage Crochet. And this is Sarah. Today's tutorial is the Tunisian half double crochet stitch. What I have in front of me is um, obviously the Tunisian half double crochet stitch. And um, it's a pattern that I came up with to try it out. And this is a scarf pattern. I'm not done making the scarf itself, but um, this is the underside of the stitch. You can see it makes a really nice, very textured stitch on both sides. But this is the front side, and I just love how it looks and feels. And this is um, Premier Sweet Roll. And I can't remember, it's like strawberry shortcake or something like that. Anyway, um, beautiful feeling stitch and beautiful looking stitch, both on the underside and the top side. To get started, I want to explain a couple of things. Normally in Tunisian crochet, we do a foundation row of Tunisian simple stitch, and I did do that here, and you can do that for this if that's how you like to start out all of your stitching with Tunisian. But with this particular stitch, you could start out right away with the Tunisian half double. So I worked up this one to show you what it would look like with the starting or the foundation row of Tunisian Simple and then going into the half double. On the back side you can't really tell, I mean like these two lumps are pretty close together and the rest are spread apart, but um, if you don't want that beginning row to be different from everything else, with this particular stitch you can do you can start with that stitch. So that's how I'm actually going to show you how to do this. If you've been watching all of my other Tunisian videos, um, you'll know how to do that foundation row by now anyway. So if that's how you prefer, still you can go ahead and make your foundation row. There is no multiple for this stitch, so since we're just doing the stitch, just chain up as many as you like and grab the hook appropriate, and I will meet you back here in a moment. So you're obviously going to need some yarn. I just have some random yellow scrap yarn and I believe it's Red Heart Super Saver. And I have two different hooks. I have my Tunisian in, in a six mil and then I have a regular six mil plain old hook. So I like to start out with the small hook so my ends aren't flopping around, you know, this long hook. So I'm going to chain up as many as I feel like chaining. And you, of course, just start with a regular slip knot. If you're still a beginner with Tunisian, I recommend going to see my introductory and beginning videos uh, first, because this is actually more of an intermediate stitch, just because of certain things you need to look out for while working it. Once you've seen those things, though, it's really easy to work. This is why I'm including it in my beginner series, because it really is kind of an adventurous beginner. Okay, so I have no idea how many I just chained up. I just chained up. Since there's no multiple, it doesn't matter. You just do however many you think you're comfortable with doing. And I'm going to start right away with the actual stitch pattern. So I'm going to switch to my long hook now. They're also called Afghan hooks, by the way. But Tunisian, Afghan, long, whatever. To work a half double, normally you yarn over and insert and go, and that's actually what we're going to do here, but we're going to start in the second chain from the hook instead of like the third. And I like to turn my work over and grab the back hump, so I can see this is the first hump, here's the second one. So you're going to yarn over like you normally would for a half double, insert your hook into the second chain from the hook and pull up a loop and hold it. And then you're going to yarn over and go into the next chain and do the same exact thing. And you're going to end up with a lot of loops on your hook. So just keep doing that all the way down. Yarning over, insert into the next chain and pull up a loop all the way down. I've gathered up all of my chains and loops, and there's quite a bit on there. Now we need to do what we normally do to make our left edge, which is to chain one. So we're just going to yarn over and pull through one loop to do that. And now we need to, as Mikey from the Crochet Crowd likes to say, waltz our way back. 
So you're going to yarn over and pull through three loops at a time. So now you're finishing up that half double. You Normally when you work a half double, you yarn over and pull through three loops. Well, that's what we're doing now. So we're finishing all of our half doubles. So you're going to yarn over and pull through one, two, three. One, two, three. Whoop, three is good. There we go. One, two, three one two three all the way down and when you get to your last bit you should have three loops left and then that will tell you that you did it right all the way down if you don't you made a mistake somewhere and so now i have my last three i know i did it right i'm just going to pull through all three and be done and there's the first row of the tunisian half double for the second row and onward, there's some things I needed to point out to you. For one, unlike we have been doing in our Tunisian series, we need to chain up one to get to the correct height. And I've zoomed in because I needed to point some things out to you. So we're looking for a couple of stitches and this very first bar we never worked, that's always part of our right edge. This is kind of tucked behind. So this is our next bar. And you can see all of these bars are kind of raised up. Those are our normal, like Tunisian simple stitch bars, okay? But we're also needing to grab a second bar at the same time. And it's the one that's kind of tucked behind and in between. And it's kind of like paired. It's kind of hard to do it one-handed. There we go. It's kind of paired with the stitch. So you can see these next two right here are also the ones you need to go into, and these two, and so on. And it becomes more evident as you continue to work down the row. So after we have done our chain up, we're going to start grabbing up our loops. But before we do that, remember that we are working a half double crochet stitch, so we do need to yarn over. And remember I told you we're not working these. This is your next set of bars. And they're pretty paired together, so I'm going to insert behind those and pull up a loop. And then my yarn over and go under the next pair that just kind of pops up as you're working the forward pass. And I'm going to yarn over and go under the next pair that just kind of pop up. And yarn over and go under the next pair that pop up. And yarn over and go under the next pair that pops up. And you're going to do this all the way down until we get to our left edge stitch. Okay, so I am down to my last two my last pair and my left edge. So I'm going to yarn over and work that last pair. And something else that we don't normally do with Tunisian crochet for the edge stitch, I'm going to yarn over just like we have been to keep it consistent. And then I'm going to insert my hook into that left edge, whoops, and try to get two loops like you're supposed to. I think I pushed this back too far. There we go. And I got my two loops and I'm just going to pull up like normal. Okay, so now that we've gathered up all of our pairs and all of our loops, we're going to do the normal chain up of one on that left edge. You can see all our chain ups of ones here. And then we're going to waltz back, pull through three. So yarn over and pull through three loops. So one, two, three, just take it slow until you develop your rhythm. There's no rush. And you should have, for your last one, three loops on the hook. If you don't, you need to redo because you missed something or you added something, but something's not right. All right, this is what your work will be looking like so far. For row three, 
I need to show you something else. <laughs> Remember I said from row two on when we're gonna chain up one at the beginning, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. But now I want you to see that your stitches look a little different from row two. They're no longer really paired. You have your straight sort of Tunisian simple stitch bar, and then the one that was paired with it below is now sort of leaning away from it, like it doesn't want to be next to it. Those are the two you need to put together. So, and of course, remember, we need to yarn over because we are working a half double. We need to go under that vertical bar and the one next to it that's kind of leaning away from it and pull up a loop. So yarn over, grab that next bar and the bar next to it that's kind of leaning away and pull up a loop. And you're going to do that all the way down. And for each row here on, it will look like this. So you'll be able to identify it pretty easily after this row. So I have my last two to work under and my edge. And remember, you need to yarn over and go through both loops on this left edge stitch. And voila, now we've gathered up all of our loops. Now we need to chain up one, so just yarn over and pull through one, like normal. And then we're going to waltz our way back again, so yarn over and pull through three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, all the way down until you have only one loop left on the hook. And remember, your last pull through has to be through three, no more, no less. So here's what our work is continuing to look like. It looks wonderful. I really like how squishy and cozy this stitch looks and the back is equally as pretty. So I'm gonna work one more row with you and then we're going to do the bind off, which is different than what we've been doing. So I chained up my one and I'm gonna yarn over and grab the next vertical bar and the one leaning away from it. And do that all the way down. And now I need to grab that edge stitch and remember to yarn over to do that for this particular stitch. And then roll those two loops over and pull up. All right, so we're going to do our last work off together. And we're just going to chain up one. And then waltz your way back. Okay, so we have done about four rows worth of Tunisian half double crochet, and now I'm going to show you how to bind off, because that is, again, different than we normally have been doing. We do still need to chain up one, and now I'm going to switch to my regular hook, because we're not going to be gathering up loops anymore, and this will just be quicker and easier. And again, we don't work this right edge stitch. We go to the next vertical bar and this one that's leaning away still. We have to keep it consistent. So we're gonna yarn over because we're doing half doubles and go under both of those stitches once again and pull through every loop on your hook. So yarn over, insert into those next two stitches or bars and pull through and through and through. Yarn over, go into the next vertical and the one leaning away from it and pull through through and through. And you're just going to do that all the way down. Whoops, and I will show you how to do the left edge stitch. And this is actually a bit awkward because of the yarn over section of that. It, it, it just wants to come undone while you're working with it. So you like that. So now you can see our bind off looks exactly like the rest of the stitches with the exception of this little bar here because we slip stitched instead of finished the stitch properly. So now we need to work this last left edge. We still need to yarn over and insert into the side and grab two loops and pull through 
and through and through and then you can fasten off like you normally do. So that is the Tunisian half double crochet stitch and um, something you'll notice right away is that it does not curl and I'm pretty sure it's because there are extra loops involved and maybe that helps it to, to, you know, forcefully lay flatter. But either way, I love how this stitch looks on both sides. Perfect grid on the back and beautiful texture on the front. It's thicker, it's squishier. I love it. <laughs> and I hope you do too. And I also hope that you all like this video. Leave a comment. Subscribe, hit the little bell icon to be notified anytime we upload a new video, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.